Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Trina. Welcome to another camera angle also the game engine series. Today I thought that we would do something a little bit different. I feel like we've just been, we've just been making this game engine. It's been all serious, serious, serious. And I sat down today and I was like, do I even want to do this? And the answer was last time I was able to show you what the Hazel community was able to make. Check out that video if you haven't already. And today what I thought we would do is we would try and make something ourselves. And I would show you just a few of the other things that have happened throughout the week. As you can see, I'm in my cozy jumper yet again and what we're gonna do is dive in and see if we can make something some sort of game some kind of rendering test let's take a look so in all seriousness the first thing that I wanted to show you guys was this little Trello board that I made this is something that will hopefully shed a little bit of light into what is happening with Hazel right now stuff that we've planned issues that we know affect the engine all of that kind of stuff to go to it you can simply go to hazelengine.com issues and that will actually take you to this Trello board it's public you should be able to see it and you can even leave comments please read this kind of welcome section and a kind of description of what all of the labels do but otherwise we just have this little list that I made just then in around five minutes so of course it's gonna I'm gonna keep adding stuff to it and it's going to change probably a lot now one more thing that I actually wanted to add before I started recording this video and totally forgot was if there are issues that you want to report I've got this kind of report section maybe write a comment over here I can make it into like an actual known issue card and stuff like that and if you have also kind of feature requests we'll say or something like that I'll just write ideas and I'll probably move this over into another list, which I'll call, I don't know, maybe like community or something like that. And then you guys can just go nuts and put ideas and stuff that you want to see all of that stuff just under this card here. But in general, you can see that we're currently working on 2D rendering. The cards kind of explain what everything means and I will probably end up adding a more detailed description as well. But this is kind of what we're, what we're looking at. Everything else is obviously stuff that I've thought about or considered in one way or another. And then texture atlases is kind of the next big feature that we're going to be working on in 2D rendering. Now at this point, it's probably worth saying that the reason why I'm making this little game slash and I don't even know what to call it, but the reason why I'm making this thing in Hazel today and why I decided to do this was because things like texture atlases, well, they require textures. We need to have some kind of, I, I want to have something that is actually in Hazel that's distributed, I guess, as part of this Hazel repository, something that we've just put together really quickly that will actually be able to demonstrate all of these features. And whilst that kind of game that we talked about in, la in the last episode that was made by the community is great and all, I, I really want to keep that as like a standalone game and that'll be like a project that uses Hazel but then as we're developing Hazel I also want to have something kind of internal to the engine so hopefully that clears it up a little bit. As for what we're going to make let's take a look at what we have right now in Hazel. What we have is inside the sandbox class we have this kind of demo of using these various things and that's fine I'm actually going to continue writing this stuff right here in the sandbox 2d class because the sandbox 2d class it's a 2d sandbox it's meant for that stuff. But the first thing I'm going to do is probably, well, there's a, there's a few ideas that I had just before this video began. What I wanted to do was essentially make some kind of uh, tile-based, like 2D top-down uh, RPG, roguelike, whatever style environment. So we want to probably have like some dirt textures. I guess we probably want some way to also define what a level looks like rather than being completely random. But I want probably like at least 10 or so different textures so that we can eventually put them into a texture atlas or just test out, you know, rendering 10 different textures inside the batch renderer individually. I also want to just stress test the renderer in general. And I thought what better way to do that than to use some kind of particle system. Now, I wrote a particle system in an hour. It's called One Hour Particle System. I'll link the video over there in the top right corner. If you guys haven't seen that, check it out. Now, that was completely standalone to Hazel. It was just using my OpenGL kind of library. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this as best as we can. We're going to implement it into the batch renderer and we're gonna see if it can actually handle that. So that's the first thing that I want to do. Let's go ahead and do that. And we're just gonna do it completely live. So we do have some randomization here but in general I think the particle system is fairly straightforward let's go ahead and try and just copy it kind of as is and then we'll see if we can just like make it work a little bit better so in sandbox source I'm doing this all in sandbox because 
When the time comes to write a particle system in Hazel, it's going to be very different. Oops, I just tried to paste in the source code into the name of the file. That's awkward. Um, when the time actually comes to write a particle system in Hazel, it's obviously going to be very different than this little particle system that I wrote in one hour. And I probably call it particle system instead of particle. Sometimes when I'm talking, it's difficult to do anything. All right, so the CPP file, we're going to go ahead and grab the entire CPP file. Now at the moment, this kind of just deploys like a whole bunch of particles at the mouse cursor. I guess that's a pretty cool way of doing things. Um, and I might actually continue to do that. So let's include Hazel instead of like gel core and all of that stuff. We don't need to do things like load shaders. We don't really need to do a lot. I think uh, we'll do Hazel time step, obviously. On render takes in an orthographic camera. Sure, we'll kind of keep it I don't want to spend today writing some kind of particle system. So we will keep it fairly, uh, fairly like similar to the original kind of one, except for all the, all the, all the places where it's different. So we use some randomizations and I think, yeah, we probably want to grab the random class as well because I don't want to bloat the code of, you know, this too much. I'm just going to paste the class into, whoops. I'm just going to paste the class right over here into the top of this file. We'll include random, um, and then the we want is like some static stuff. I guess we probably should grab that as well, shouldn't we? Because we had that stuff in the original file. So I'll just take this stuff, and I will paste it over here. All right, so we have this random now, um, this random class that we can use. Hazel orthographic camera replaces this stuff. Now this is us creating like vertex arrays and various particles like shaders and stuff like that. We don't really need any of that. So I'm just going to delete that and we don't need this use program. Really all we need to do on in on render is render the particles. And since we already have a renderer, we can just use our existing renderer. So you can see that if I copy this stuff, this is really what we use to render. So let's paste it over here and I'm going to try and uh, quickly like translate this code that I've haven't actually looked at before today. So hopefully it won't take too long. I should probably stop talking. Okay, so we have a transform. Oh, were we doing one? Oh yeah, we were doing one draw call per particle. Okay, well that that's gonna be different. So we don't have a transform anymore, but what we do do is uh, we do probably a rotate, either a rotated or a non-rotated quad, depending on the rotation. Um, they are different kind of, yeah, okay. So what I'll do is I'll say if particle.rotation, is not zero. So if, I mean, realistically though, pretty much all of them are gonna be rotated. So I could probably just skip this if check for every single thing and just draw a rotated quad. If it comes out as zero, zero is gonna be fairly unlikely, I think. So we're just gonna do a, a, a draw rotated quad here. Uh, we're going to want to take in the particle positions, which we can just, I think we can just give it um, a 2D position like this, particle position. Then we want a rotation, which is going to be Oh, this is the size. Uh, okay, cool. So the size is just, uh, let's see, size, size, I think. And then the rotation is particle rotation. Now this is important because over here, I'm clearly giving it the rotation in uh, degrees, I think, right? Wait, why is it minus 45? Oh, this was in our, our test. <laughs> That's right. I thought, anyway, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what I think. Um, so particle rotation here, that's probably, I'm not sure if that's, um, well, yeah, it's in radians. So it looks like, does our API support radians? See, this is why it's really nice to just do tests and stuff to make sure that everything's right. Because obviously like we, I think I've mentioned this before, but this should always be in radians because if you want to convert to radians, that should be like, if you, if you want to store degrees, then you want that to be like a kind of client-based thing. You don't want to always force the renderer to have to do conversions for you because that's going to slow things down if you store it in radians to begin with because then you'll have to convert it two degrees to give it to the renderer which is going to convert into radians anyway which is silly and we're trying our best here not to be silly so this does rotation yeah it does do glm radians so this is very bad um i know i did that and i know that i probably shouldn't have that's why we had minus 45 there but it's okay we'll convert this we'll make sure we're not doing any kind of conversion here into radians whatsoever so we were doing one over here as well um and i'll write a little note in the comment just so that it's super clear that this is like rotations rotation is in radians okay just just as like a little note so that we know 
that we are in fact dealing with radians. And since we did kind of test rota rotator quads here, I will actually do a little conversion into radians here, just so that we don't break our existing code base. Um, so rotation, I guess that was in, yeah. Well, it was, it was always in degrees, so now we're converting into radians. Okay, cool. That stuff is done. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to go back to my particle system. And so we've got our size. We'll put in the particle rotation, which is just particle dot rotation. And then this is the color. So the color we used was particle shader color. And that was just a GLM value pointer. That was just our color, really. So I could probably grab that and just stick that in here. And I think that's it. So we're drawing a rotated quad at the correct position with the right size, with the correct rotation and with the correct color. So we didn't, this, this um, particle system didn't support textures or anything. So that's fine. If it did, it wouldn't really be an issue, but basically all of that stuff is gone. Now, the next step is this kind of begin scene, end scene. So obviously we'll do that for the entire like particle pool. So we'll do, uh, just this is just camera so you can see it actually integrates kind of nicely with our api here um and this is good because you know we're trying to test out the renderer 2d api and it's not bad i guess um all right and then in color we had color a times life i don't remember why that was there but it was commented out so guess we'll leave it as is but that's i think that's it so that's now converted you can see it should compile if i hit Control f7 to just compile the file yep we're good i think yep we're good okay so now if we go back to sandbox 2d let's actually use this particle system so i'll include it we'll do include particle system particle system.h and then i will just have a little particle system here and now i'm actually going to pop over to my code to see to the one hour particle system repository to see how I actually used this. So I think it was here, right? Okay, we, we basically predefined a certain particle and it was called M particle. So that was, whoops, that's random. So that was, uh, I think M particle was, so we had, uh, it was, yeah, it was probably a particle props thing. And then, but that's particle system at age. What did I actually want to open? This is all going wrong. Here it is, sandbox layer. So sandbox layer, um, yeah. So it had this particle props, which was a particle uh, properties thing. So let's grab that and then we'll come over here and we'll uh, also put that in here. So we have a particle as well. And then we'll initialize it with just the same stuff here because again, I don't wanna spend too much time on this and we've already got some code for us. So over here in on attach, I'm going to, uh, you know, this is our particle. It's pretty clear that it's our particle. We don't really need a comment for that. Uh, and then coming down here, I guess what we did was, okay, so we have, um, and again, this even uses Hazel like uh, key code. So it's super easy to implement. So we have, um, so we did particle system on update on render and we had our, a little bit of input stuff going on in on update that should be fairly easy to replicate. So if we go back to here and look at our on update function, uh, let's draw our scene first, and then after we do end scene, and this is kind of like a little scope for that, uh, let's come over here and let's do, so this will be hazel input is mouse button pressed, um, hazel input get mouse position. So luckily this API is pretty much identical. Hazel application get window get width, that it actually is identical. I did base off that OpenGL library off of Hazel, obviously, so that, that helps. Camera controller get bounds. That's something that we don't have. That's something that I think I had to add uh, during, I don't know, just during the development of that, because we need to know the bounds of our camera so that we can actually draw the particles or actually emit the particles from the correct space. So let's go back into this one hour particle system, and then we'll go into, I guess, core source, and then let's go to GL core, uh, core, maybe <laughs> lots of core everywhere. And then where do we have our camera? Oh, we don't have a camera here. Let's just type in Let's try and search for camera in this repository and we'll see what the, where is it? Okay, so it's in util, orthographic camera controller, that makes sense. So if we look at the header file, I guess, here are our bounds. So we have this thing called struct orthographic camera bounds and then we have get bounds, which returns bounds. Okay, let's quickly integrate these bounds into our camera because I think in general, it's useful to actually know what we're dealing with as far as bounds go. And I guess this is something that could be inside um, the orthographic camera class itself, not necessarily the controller class. So if we go back out here, I mean, we did actually have this inside orthographic camera controller, but I think that was only because, yeah, why did we decide to put it in controller? Maybe, maybe we do want to have it in controller then. I don't know. Past me seems to have made that decision. And since we have a controller here, I'm going to leave it here. 
The reason I wasn't sure was because it might actually help to know the bounds of the camera itself. But I don't know, that might, again, that might have some performance implications. And if we just want a quick and dirty performance camera, we don't want to be continually recalculating the bounds. Whereas for a camera controller, that would be necessary. So like as in not necessary, but that probably is permissible. So here we have bounds. Yeah, because see, the way I've implemented this is it's very uh, reliant on, uh, you know, doing extra calculations and stuff. So I think we had, yeah, camera aspect ratio, zoom level, stuff like that. Whereas that's what bounds becomes. So we're just kind of, it's not really a huge deal in terms of performance because we're just, we're just changing where we're storing this stuff. But, you know, it might be something that we don't want to have inside um, our camera class for all cases. Because again, that kind of, that, that default, like orthographic camera class is just supposed to be a container of, of data, which is like the, you know, the matrix of the camera and stuff like that. Okay, so um, let's see. So bounds, yeah, bounds needs to always get, get updated. I probably should just steal this orthographic camera control. It's, I think it's better than ours. But um, on mouse scrolled. I think that was that. So yeah, we just update the bounds here. I think before we do the set projection, probably. Yeah, and then we set the projection and then it's the same bounds update before we set projection. So projection, I believe, should be based off of the bounds. That's probably the whole point of this. So if we scroll up a little bit um, and let me just, I'll search for bounds here just to make sure we're not missing anything. No, we're really not. So where does it set the projection? So we call ca oh, camera set projection and then we do it based off the bounds. So yeah. My mistake. I thought set projection was something in this class. Let's just set it to that. Okay, cool. So we're kind of adding a, in like a little middleman just so that we can retrieve that middleman and then be able to figure out the bounds of the camera really easily when we need to. And we need to in certain situations where we, for example, want to emit ca uh, particles in camera space. So uh, let's kind of take this. Um, and well, it's not really all, it's not really about camera space. It's more about just the fact that remember, we want to emit particles from the mouse pointer, but the mouse pointer is obviously relative to the window, whereas we want to emit the particles into world space. So this is going to account for like the camera zoom and everything else, which is going to be super important. Now I'm going to go back to the sandbox 2D class and uh, fix everything up, I was gonna say, but it looks like everything works. So based on this code that I just slapped in, does Hazel now have a little bit of a particle system? We will find out by hitting F5. Okay, so first step is nothing renders, and then also the particles don't render. Oh, I was just zoomed in. Oh, I need to update the bounds probably there. Okay, so our particles do in fact render, and you can see they are in camera space. If I make this full screen and I move around, I can just generate these kind of orange particles wherever the mouse cursor is. Now they're happening behind these, uh, which might be fine, might not be fine. Uh, we are always drawing with, with depth testing enabled, um, and we are actually using the Z buffer to figure out positions like this. So because of that, like again, it might be worth rendering particles in this example with depth testing off, just so they always render on top as long as we render them last. But uh, that's just the way it is, I guess. Um, so what is rendering on top exactly this stuff? And why is it rendering on top? I think we're rendering with a Z of zero which is probably fine realistically. I mean, what we could do if we wanted to sync it a little bit back, you can see that, um, well, the first thing I probably want to check is where are we rendering these particles? So we're just doing position uh, and position uh, does position particle props position. So there's no Z or anything like that here, is there? If we go back to sandbox 2D, uh, let's see, the position is zero, zero as a 2D position. Okay, so what we could do is realistically, if we wanted them to really be in front, is we could come over here into the rendering code and then just set their position, which is over here, to basically be, uh, well, let's do this. We'll do GLM vec3 position equals, and we'll take the particle position, we'll place it with our position. We'll set it to be, uh, and there's no easy way I think to do this, but dot X, dot Y, and then we can, you know, choose to, for example, bring it forward or whatever, so that the Z is a little bit higher and therefore it should be on top. And you can see now if I rerun this, uh, the particles are on top. So that's just something that we could do if we wanted to actually do this. And the cool thing is if you look at the renderer 2D stats that we have here, we have 405 quads, three draw calls, but watch what happens when I move this around. So you can see we're up to like 600 and then obviously as they fade away, we go down to 405. 
So that's basically what's happening. We're rendering about 250 or so quads. We should be able to massively increase that though. And we can do that by first of all, making sure that the, that the life is a little bit more than it uh, is here. So lifetime at the moment is one second. Let's make it like five seconds. And then also instead of emitting like, how many do we do? We do five like per tick here, we can do like 50, so 10 times more. Now this is probably gonna be a lot of particles, let's be honest. I did just jam up the life by five times and also the actual, um, oh yeah, here it is. So we are experiencing a little bit of frame rate here and they don't look like they're lasting very long. They're not lasting very long because the particle pool is only a thousand. So actually, realistically, we are only able to render a thousand at a time, which is not gonna be enough. So if we go into particle, uh, particle system dot h, and we take a look at the particle pool of nine nine nine. Um, is the size we probably want to add a parameter over here? Particle system uint thirty two t max particles, and then this is going to uh, be important because what it's going to do is it's going to when we create this, it's going to resize it to the max particles, and then we also want to set pool index to be basically max particles minus one. And then I think everything else should definitely not be dependent on that 1000 figure and it doesn't look like it is. So pool index will set to like zero that gets set automatically. In fact, we well, I mean, we don't need to initialize it here because the constructor is taking care of that obviously. Uh, and then when we create this, so I mean, at the moment, like we can give it a default value if we want, that might be Nice. So let's set this to like, I don't know, let's do 100,000. So that's 100,000 particles. So that should be, that should be not bad. I think we can do 100,000 draw calls um, or rather 100,000 particles. So yeah, this is definitely a lot more. And you can see those quads are going up. Our frame rate is going down. There's a few things we can do about that. We can run this in release mode. But realistically, I think um, this is going to be th probably bottlenecked by the way this particle system is written, because as you can see, it just has a particle with a whole bunch of data in it. And then it's just got like a, an array of that. So our data is extremely fragmented. We're not, you know, we're not kind of keeping it all in one place. Although you can see that in release mode, we really don't have a particle. We don't really have a problem. And you can see they're all kind of here. We have a whole bunch of particles. I don't know what our performance is. It doesn't say, but if I just keep doing this, you can see we're, okay, so we, we kind of, no, 10,000 quads. Yeah, it's kind of hard to draw more than, I guess, 13,000 quads because that's just the rate at which particles are being generated and then reused in the pool. But you can see we do indeed have quite a lot of particles and, you know, this is fairly smooth, even with the like terrible use of memory inside our particle system. So that is that. One more thing I quickly wanted to mention as well is we had this problem where of course we open this and we see nothing and we have to kind of zoom out and then the camera starts working again. Uh, this is one of those things that is very easy to miss in C++, but you can see that what we're doing here is where it looks like we're initializing the bounds first with the correct data, and then we're actually giving it to the camera. But what's happening is the camera is being is actually being initialized first with the wrong bounds, with the uninitialized bounds, and then the bounds are being initialized. And that's because if we look at the header file, the order in which we've defined them in is like this, the camera first, then the bounds. This is the initialization order, not whatever you've put over here. So if we simply switch these two, so we do the bounds first, then the camera, if we hit F5, we should be absolutely perfect. And you can see from that very first frame, everything is correct. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this little kind of different type of video, I guess. What we're going to do next time, and I am going to make one of these videos, like I'm not going to make you guys wait for another week and we'll just do this again. I'm going to make a video in a few days, I think, where we're going to actually change this kind of what we have here with the various colors and this checkerboard background. We're going to actually use some real texture assets that people have made. Well, I'll just find some online probably, or if you guys have some, you can post them in the Game Engine Series Discord channel. I will use them and I'll make some kind of like world and we'll integrate that into Hazel. And I don't know, I think this is a really cool idea. We're basically making like a little game or at least a scene inside Hazel. And that's gonna be really cool for both having like a really solid test case that we can actually make sure we use all of Hazel's features so that we can test everything. And who knows, maybe we'll uh, make this into a fun little community game. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget you can help support the series on Patreon, patreon.com forward slash the is the best way to help support me 
and this series and all of that stuff, you'll get access to the more advanced Hazel development branch, as I mentioned, which is like kind of a 3D version of Hazel. And it's stuff that I've been live streaming the development of every single week. So definitely check that out if you are interested. And I will see you guys next time, hopefully, hopefully in a couple days, and we'll continue making this fun little games slash project we've got here. See you next time. Goodbye. Thank you.